So what you're seeing right here is two power supplies for bit axe mining. They're both identical and they power these two bit axes and these two over there. I know there's a lot of cobwebs over there, but that's uh, another problem for another day. Today's video, we are going to be talking about power supplies and picking the right ones for bit axe overclocking and just mining in general. So we've only actually got three power supplies overall. We have two for the bit axes and then we have an extra one here for the nerd Q axes. So today we're gonna to be diving into basically all the nuances that I think you should know, my recommendations for power supplies and mainly kind of things I've ran into in the past. But before we get into that, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Crypto Miner Pros. Since 2018, CryptoMinerBros.com has been the premier site for top tier crypto mining hardware, earning the trust of miners across the globe. The prices displayed on their site cover shipping and DDP straight to your doorstep, ensuring no unexpected costs at checkout. They deliver to over 100 countries and even provide lower invoicing options to help you cut down on customs fees. Payment is a breeze with options like direct bank transfer or cryptocurrencies including Bitcoin, USDT or Ethereum. With over 250 ASIC options, they stock some of the channel's favorites like the Bitax, the Bitax Touch and the Avalon Nano 3S. Join tens of thousands of happy customers who rely on CryptoMinerBros.com for dependable hardware fulfillment, clear pricing and a top-notch service. Check out CryptoMinerBros.com today, link in the description. Okay, so what you're seeing right there is a mean well, I believe it's LSR 100. If you can see in there, LSR 100 it is upside down, but it's that number there. And mainly what you see in the BitAx community, or mainly just with power supplies, is that mean well tend to make some of the best power supplies out there. So the LSR range ranges I think from 15 watts all the way up to around 3000 watts so you can get these way bigger as you can see with those two you don't really need cooling but as you go higher with this power supply you need a fan in there to cool everything but with bit axes it's very nuanced because you need a 5 volt power supply when compared to something like the node QX which needs a 12 volt power supply so that's something that could trip you up if you weren't realistically aware of it. The main power supplies that you get for the bit axe are just ones that you plug in, like this one that we have here, and that is for the Zyber 8. But we could technically cut this off and attach it into there because they're both 12 volt. So as I said, these are the LSR 100 range, and I've seen people get up to, I think you can go 350 on these without needing a, another fan like that. And that will be able to power around five or six bit axes at the same time. The only problem you run into is the actual space. So if we zoom in here, let's just zoom it in. The space on the rack is a bit difficult to actually increase without having to cut your own off. So this is only powering two because you have two connectors there, two connectors there, and then three on the end go into your wall socket. You can split these out after the fact, so you could cut there and actually split it out into four, but it's just easier, I think, if we have two run into one and then the other two run into one. Even though it's 100 watts, these are pulling probably, that's probably pulling 20 and that's probably pulling 15, which is nowhere near 100 watts. In theory, we could have got a way smaller power supply, something that is maybe 50 or even 75 with an 80% rule for the power supply, so we don't try to pull over the wattage. So with this power supply, I believe that this is 350, and that gives us enough power for technically three or four nerd QXs, depending on where you're running them and what wattage. But if we're running them at 70 each, we could have three, but if we're running them at maybe 60, you could have four technically on this. But you have the same problem here. This only has three slots for power. And if you wanted to power four, you'd have to cut one off and split it. So that's kind of the only limitations because you're working with such small wattages, you don't really want something that's like a bit axe max just for one 
LSR 100 watt power supply. So we're gonna head over to the computer and we're gonna go through kind of the Meanwell products. This is not a Meanwell power supply and I've had some problems with it. It has shown up on the dashboard of this little LED that says power supply not sufficient or some kind of error warning, which basically means that this is not supplying the power to there. And this one isn't a Meanwell, which is probably the reason because it's just a cheap one that I got from Amazon. So it's always about quality with power supplies. If you're not getting the highest quality, then sometimes you can run into problems like I do with this one, where firstly, the actual warning showed up, but secondly, the fan, I believe that that keeps cutting out. So there's a lot of things that you can go wrong. So I would recommend a good quality power supply. Anyway, let's head over to the computer and we'll go through a couple more things on choosing the power supply for your Bitax. So as I said, I do recommend the Meanwell power supplies just because they've been working very well for me personally. I'm pretty sure that there's maybe some higher quality power supplies that you can get, but these are some of the top range ones that you would get. And a lot of people in the community are using these, so they haven't seen much problems with them. So Meanwell have a massive range of power supplies. So basically any number on the end is how much watts it can pull. So you have something like the LSR. So this is the main range that we would work in. And I would recommend going with these just because the other ones are kind of small by here and then kind of too large up here for what you're looking for. So these are the most popular in the community and we currently have the two LSR 100s. So I'll leave a link to this on Amazon, the 100 one. Some of them they don't have on Amazon, so you might have to look around and maybe find one from another place. But mainly Amazon, I believe, holds the 100 one and the 350 one. So if you want to have maybe five or six bit axes, then you can use the link below. So this is basically what we have, the LSR 100 series, 100 watt single input switching power supply. And here it has the ratings for the LSR 100. It is important to note on the series that you want, you wanna get the dash five series because that is five volts. If you are gonna run a nerd QX, you'd want something, I wouldn't really go with 100 watts, maybe something like 200 watts and you have to go for the 12 volt version. So they have different voltages as you go up and it's just notified by the extra dash on the end. So you have LSR, which is kind of the series, you have 100, which is the wattage. And then after that is the voltage number. For bit axes, it's five volts. For nerd QXs, the bit axe hex, the Zyber 8, it's all 12 volt. So you're gonna want this one instead of this one. And my personal recommendation is the LSR 100 because we're using it, but you could also just grab a 200, which will be the same pretty much. I don't know why we didn't buy the 200 in the first place, but we would be using the LSR 200-5, the one that we're looking at here. So as I said, they kind of have enough ranges where you can pick which one you wanna go for. If you just want a really small one, you could go with the 35 one for a gamma, if you don't want to use the one that plugs in, this is very small. I'd say it's about the size of a passport, basically. And you'd obviously want to go for the five volt one again. So that's my recommendations on power supplies and which ones I think you should go for. As I said, kind of in the start of video, there are other power supplies which will technically do the same thing, but the quality does matter because if they start burning out, then Obviously you've wasted the money, but there could be dangers going on in the future where it burns up and then it starts a fire. Not many people have had that, but it does happen with lower quality power supplies. So just quick recommendations. If you have a one bit axe solution and you want to tinker around with power supplies, pick the 35 version. So that's going to be 35 watts. If you have two, I would either recommend the 100 watt version or the 75 watt version. And if you're looking to get four or five, maybe I would go for the 200 version. Anything past that is you're going to have a lot of bit axes. So I'm assuming that you know what you're doing 
But that's my recommendations for power supplies. As I said, I'll leave links in the description to everyone I can find on Amazon, but some of them just aren't on there and I don't know why. But I'll link it to the 5 volt version so there's no confusion with which ones you need to get. Now, second part of power supply is looking at cable gauge. So, uh, so normally called AWG. And when you're looking at a gauge of a cable, it's basically the text that is written on all of the cables. So if you pick up any cable that is connected to a power supply or a wall socket, typically it will have a gauge number on it. So it will say AWG and then a number. And the gauge is basically how well it carries the current or voltage across the wire that you're using. So if you have a higher AWG, it's not going to be as efficient, basically, than a lower AWG. We have this exact problem with the Node Q axes that we currently have running. We have two of them, and one of them has a 18 AWG cable, and the other one has a 16 AWG cable. So the 16 one that we would be using is technically more efficient. So it requires less voltage input from the power supply to actually give it the voltage for the node QX. So what we end up having is a difference between the voltage on one node QX compared to the other. We have 12 volts nearly bang on for the parasite pool one, but the one for the node QX is actually around 11.9 volts because there is an inefficiency drop due to the cables. So when you're looking at AWG or when you're going to buy cables to actually get this, and I'll link some cables in the description if you want it, it'll be the barrel jacks and they'll normally have it cut off at the end so you guys can wire it into the power supply very easily. I also do have a video on how to wire a power supply, which I'll leave in the description. But when it comes to the cables, you basically want anything that's under 18 or you can technically go to 20 but anything higher than 20 is kind of risking it. If you want to be really safe and you want to spend a little bit more, then you should go for 14 or 12. And anything under that is going to cost you quite a lot to actually buy. So I wouldn't bother going any lower than that. And just a recap for when you're picking, especially for overclocking. So if you have two bit axe gammas and you expect to overclock them to around 30 watts, you don't want to go for something that is 50 because you won't be able to actually pull the wattage from the power supply or it could have an adverse effect and burn out something within the power supply. So you always want to take your wattage number which is probably for the bit axe gamma the highest I've seen is around 35 watts that's the maximum and then you want to add 20% of that number and that will give you close to or find the closest number that is 20% to there. For example, if we have two bit axe gammas and we run them to 35, that is going to equal 70 watts. So if we add 20%, that would bring us up to around 90 watts, which means that we should probably go for the LSR 100 and not the LSR 75. So when it comes to overclocking, you need to account for the fact that you will be overclocking and then add an extra 20% so that you're not burning out any components or you won't be able to achieve the overclocks. And then with the gauge thing we just explained, so make sure that your gauge is around 18, but you can do 20 or you can even better do 16. So I hope you guys learned something and are well on your way to getting a power supply and hooking it up to your bit axes. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.